We are all experiencing an unprecedented time in our lives right now. The level of uncertainty, anxiety, and fear can be overpowering. As we learn to navigate our new world, all doing our part, whether it be social distancing, staying home, and abiding by federal guidelines, there are still so many on the front lines who are battling a war against an invisible enemy. Being on the front lines can place a person's physical and mental health in jeopardy. A team of resilient minds has come together and created a program called Resilient Minds on the Front Lines to bring tools, knowledge, skills, and instruction to assist in the time of need. This team is dedicated to helping those who help others. Now, I would like you to hear from a dear friend of mine who is the creator of Resilient Minds on the Front Lines, Chief Resiliency Officer for Mercer County, New Jersey, and Master Resiliency Instructor, Michael Pellegrino. Hi, my name is Michael Pellegrino, and along with being the Chief Resiliency Agent and Instructor, I am also a retired law enforcement officer and business owner. Over the next 15 or so minutes, we would like to share a message of hope. Our vision for this resiliency program is to help those on the front lines help themselves and others. Our team is comprised of resiliency practitioners, trainers, educators, change agents, experts, psychologists, and retired and active law enforcement officers. Resiliency is needed more than ever as we face such uncertainty in our lives. Learning the tools and techniques of being resilient can be life-changing when dealing with the stresses of being on the front lines. In addition to first responders, many honorable professions are now included in the phrase, on the front lines. Nurses, doctors, truck drivers, teachers, grocery store workers, factory workers, and many more are battling on the front lines to ensure our health and safety. So what is resiliency? How can, how, how can it help in today's world? How do we learn to be resilient? These are all questions we will answer for you, along with resources, guidance, techniques, and outlets for you to utilize on your journey to being resilient. I once heard the phrase, it's okay to bend in the wind, but just don't break in the storm which I've applied to many things in my life, such as the loss of dear friends to suicide, the loss of children through miscarriages, and watching loved ones suffer with cancer. These events were often leaving me hopeless. Add the incredible stress of a job in law enforcement, and it left me struggling to navigate life. That all changed once my mind changed and I applied resiliency to my life. Learning to be resilient creates hope and hope is what will get you through the toughest and darkest times in your life. Our program will continue to be posted on our YouTube channel and will be archived on our website, onthefrontlines.us. Thank you. My name is Gabrielle Salvati and I'm a professor of psychology and I work with law enforcement as well as the larger community of first responders and frontline personnel by providing training and resources for developing and strengthening personal resilience. First responders and frontline people often suffer high levels of stress due to the pressures of their jobs and resilience is a key resource to withstand the demands of adversity and to protect the well-being of those who help protect others. Now we can't change what happens to us in times of mental, emotional and physical challenge and adversity, but we can change how we react to it. And it is this control that we claim back that is the key ingredient to our resilience. Resilience is essentially our ability to bounce back from adversity because of how we choose to react to that situation. Current research in the area of positive psychology shows us that our happiness and our overall sense of well-being is linked to how we think, how we feel, and also what we do. And all of these are within our control. So resilient skills themselves fall into four different areas that impact our lives. The first one is mental resilience, and this is how we see and interpret the world and how we create opportunities for growth. 
We have emotional resilience, which is how we feel about things that happen to us, and also about how we create positivity in our lives and increase that positivity. Social resilience is about our communities and our role within our communities and our relationships with other people, and also about our sense of meaning and purpose in the world. And then finally, we have physical resilience. And here is really the impact of our bodies to how we feel in our mind. And in this area, we look at things like sleep, nutrition, exercise, and things like using meditation and breathing to control the stress in our bodies and in our minds. And the good news is that resilience is a skill set that can be learned. Now, being resilient doesn't mean that we don't get upset and it doesn't mean that things don't get to us. But what it does mean is that we have better tools to deal with it when it does happen. And this will allow us to bounce back from adversity much more quickly and with less negative effect on us. So being resilient essentially then allows us to increase our overall well-being and also our happiness. Being resilient is essentially like wearing a raincoat in the rain. What do I do? As Rocky Balboa once said, the world isn't all sunshine and rainbows. It can beat you down. So why do some people triumph in adversity while others falter? Why does a rainstorm on their sunny day seem like water off the back of a duck? It's resiliency. You know, grit, perseverance, tenacity, fortitude, resolve, all the characteristics a human spirit can bring to bear when adversity hits. What's neat about grit? What's neat about resiliency? You can grow it and you can get better at it. You know how Batman has that ultimate set of tools on his utility belt and he whips one out at just the right time? You can get one of those for yourself and you can build your own resiliency utility belt. How do you do that? It's mindset. You have to cultivate, you have to foster a resiliency mindset. And that's done through learning and through using resiliency tools. According to top experts, most humans default to the negative. So imagine your boss or teacher left you a text message that said, come to my office. Most of us don't think that's gonna end well. To overcome this tendency, we have to work at it. We must practice and build new pathways in our brains that see and grasp the win in a situation rather than default to the negative or loss. And when you see someone begin to do this, when you watch them start to change, instead of spending their life faltering the same old way, like driving a proverbial car, while constantly looking in the rearview mirror and riding on their brakes. Instead, they start looking through the windshield and using the gas pedal. I like to say they start driving like they stole it. What they start to do is flourish as a human being. Things that used to get them down, now they see those crises as opportunities to get better. And they start to bring others along on the ride with them. And when they jump from win to win, over and over again, building that new mindset, and fulfilling their potential, well, that changes everything. For me, that's my purpose in life. That's my purpose for existing. What do I do? I'm a resiliency instructor. I facilitate people in self-discovery so they can flourish. Hi, I'm Dr. Kate Tumulty felice I'm a professor of education and psychology, a master resiliency trainer for the state of New Jersey, I'm the project director for the Project for Whole Health Learning, a national initiative implementing wellness programs in schools. I work to implement trauma-informed mindfulness and holistic wellness programs for schools, veterans, and first responders. I started my career in law enforcement as a detective in major crimes and narcotics. A lot of my cases focused on kids who had been through unimaginable circumstances and helping to mitigate that trauma. I made the transition into education and teacher education and working with kids to try to help them build skills over time that would help them be strong and resilient over a lifetime. To me, resiliency is about hope. Hope is something that can come from within, but it's also a skill set that is taught to us how to be hopeful, how to be strong, how to take care of our own health and well being across a lifespan. When we teach kids math, we don't teach them math once and expect them to solve problems forever. We don't teach them to read one day and then expect them to read volumes. It's something that has to be built upon and a part of us to last across our lifespan. 
In my own life, when I was a little girl, my dad, who was a police officer, was shot in the line of duty a couple days before Christmas. He lived, but the trauma he went through impacted us across our lives. I have to believe that if he had had a support system and a resiliency skill set, like we have and like we are building today, he would still be here with us. Maya Angelou said, when we know better, we do better. Resiliency isn't something that's just for you. It's also something that helps the people around you. When I help myself, I can help others. Whether that's your family or your team, you have that ability to extend that help. Mr. Rogers said that when times were scary, his mother told him, look for the helpers. There's always helpers. And I have to believe that that's true, that resiliency is about help and it's about hope. I'm Dr. Kate Tumblety Felice. Thank you. Hello friends, my name is Gary Holden. I'm the founder and president of the Police Chaplain Program and serve in many and varied agencies and communities as a chaplain. Our organization is a national first responder organization training and assisting police, fire, EMS, and corrections to establish chaplain programs. We have trained over 1,500 chaplains around the United States of America. This organization was born in the months following 9-11. I was called to the World Trade Center to serve as a chaplain for the New York City Police, Fire Departments, and Port Authority Police and Families. And this is certainly where I learned what resiliency was all about. And now, these 19 years later, I've learned anew and afresh to be resilient. You see, in March of 2019, I was diagnosed with stage 4 cancer, which, like many others has been attributed to being at the World Trade Center. We all have adversity in our lives, and certainly many are experiencing in these days adversity in many different ways. But it's not easy to hear the words that you have cancer, and stage four cancer at that. And many thoughts and concerns entered my heart and mind, as you can imagine. Like, how long do I have left? What about my uh, family and friends, and my calling? But I learned a long time ago through my God, my experiences, and my training to try to be an optimistic person, to be resilient, to rebound. And so a year later, I'm still here by the grace of God, and I can truly and honestly say I'm better for it. No matter what you might be going through, you too can rebound and be a better and even more productive person. I'm really no different than you. We often hear, do we not, and experience words like obstacle, challenge, trouble, pressure, and stress. But we also hear and experience words like believe, flexible, attitude, grow, and learn. These all cover resiliency. And we want to share with you through these broadcasts how to grow through your adversity, whatever that might be, and end your life to be a more resilient person. Well, I'll certainly be praying that these broadcasts will make an impact in your life. I leave you with this thought. The blessings are there. Just learn to count them. God bless. As you can see, the team we have assembled for Resilient Minds on the front lines is impressive. Experts from various fields will be contributing to each program. In addition, we believe music is medicine. A good friend, Matt Kennan, country music singer and songwriter, wrote a very moving song a few years ago named The Call. Matt believes strongly in resilient minds on the front lines and has given us permission to include his incredible video in this program. The message is no matter how hard life may seem, there is always hope and making one phone call can drastically change a life forever. Thank you for joining us. We are here to help those on the front lines help themselves and others. For more information, you can visit us online at onthefrontlines.us. We will continue to bring you 15 minutes of hope in a world turned upside down. Thank you. Today was going to be the day. 
He'd already wrote the note And parked that Chevrolet At the end of that dead end road Had his finger on the trigger Just about to end everything He was taking one last long breath When he heard his cell phone ring And his best friend said, man, where you been? We're heading down to the lake this weekend. You better not miss it, cause buddy, I swear, it won't be the same if you ain't there. And I told that girl that you liked so much, you were coming along and her eyes lit up. I better let you go, man, I really hope I didn't catch you. Yeah, make that call. 